So, sup guys, it's your boy, Dark Raku here with What If Issei had an anti-magic demon with him. Now, not the point, this is part 4, uh, it's been 2 weeks since I did part 3, so yeah. I should also mention that I haven't actually done what's it called, I wanna do What If Issei, well, basically, who was the White Flame Monarch, um, I know I still gotta do that one, I, I really gotta do that one, because, uh, yeah. But not the point. Let me begin into this what if before I get another call from a random ass web uh, website that wants to enroll me into another school that I don't even want to go. Yes, it's a fucking hectic day. Or hectic 14 minutes. Because I started the shit and accidentally fucked it up. Okay, you know what? Not the point. Let me begin into this what if. Let me shut the fuck up and let me begin. Okay. So we begin into Issei getting to school. Now, of course, Issei's brownish hair and brownish eyes, chocolate brown eyes, are kind of walking into school. Now, there's one problem. He kind of, well, mostly six people, six females in total, knows what his true identity looks like. He looks much more different from his just normal self. He has actually ash kind of blonde hair, and of course, is where it will, blue and green eyes. Which, he didn't really like showing off his, like, well, mostly bonding with the... What is that one word? Mostly when you have two different color of eyes, yeah. That's why he's kind of always afraid of doing that. Mostly because when he was younger, he didn't really like being made fun of because of how he had two different color of eyes. One being an emerald green, while the other one being a sapphire blue, but yeah. Of course, it worked well. The sapphire, mostly the green, was actually from his kind of mother's side, which, yeah. And his, like, blue color is mostly kind of from his father's side, but yeah. Or, mostly, his mother does have kind of a dullish, well, not dullish, mostly a bluish eye and brownish hair. But his father kind of has grayish, uh, whitish hair and, of course, having green eyes, but yeah. But, of course, Issei, he has kind of that color, but yeah. Now, for the one reason he has ash blonde hair instead of having either grayish white, whitish color or even brownish, is just because odd genetics, but yeah. Now, of course, not the point. Let me begin. This is what, if, yeah, I'm rambling on. Now, of course, this is where, well, he say he gets to school, of course, a little bit afraid, hoping that the girls didn't actually spread rumors about him, which he's terrified because if rumors actually spread around, then mostly a lot of people would show up with bleach, trying to dye his hair back to normal, and that just scares the shit of him. Does it work, Will? He just wants to kind of be left alone, playing his video games, and not being bothered with shit like that. Especially the devils. If Rhea is managed to find this out, even with her creepy ass self most of the time. Yes, Rhea has been kind of really creepy around him. And of course, he'd rather not have a creepy devil that has devil powers. Going around and trying to undye his hair, undye his color eyes, mostly. Well, not undye, mostly get rid of the eye lenses, but yeah. He hates his life, but yes. Does it work? Well, we go into EC right now, going to his class. Now, of course, he gets into class trying to act normal. Of course, this is where he sees a called Junko and, well, Aika. And Junko and Aika are talking. This is where when Aika and Junko notice EC, they just wave him over towards the desk. And of course, this is where EC sits in his like, spot while they're kind of talking with him. EC kind of looks kind of very nervous. Really nervous. This is where, well, Aika and Junko kind of ask him and why he's nervous. Issei kind of whisper towards Aika if she didn't tell anyone. This is where Aika just starts giggling and laughing. This is where, well, uh, Issei sweat drops and this is where, well, Aika says, no, I haven't told anyone. And besides, why would I tell anyone? You're mine, not anyone else. This is where, well, Junko noticed the uh, tone of what she was using, which kind of made her really jealous with that. This is where, well, Junko kind of like grabs Issei's arm and puts his, well not arm, mostly his hand, into her kind of bosoms. This is where, well, Issei was kind of blushing madly, wondering why she was doing this. And this is where, well, Aika got annoyed, which she then grabbed his other hand. This is where, well, both Tomorohama and Masui were just shocked and dumbfounded. Even though they weren't trying to pay attention because, well, Aika did kind of embarrass them by kind of telling their size. So yeah, of course the word Junko didn't really care that much what she was doing, but of course the word well, they were basically trying to make Issei fall in love for one of them.
because they're kind of really fighting over his, well, mostly, his mostly, how should I say, personality and other stuff, but yeah, this is where, well, Junko says, Aika, you know you should let him go, I don't think that's going to work, how are you going to seduce him like that, this is where, well, she said with such a very sassy tone, this is where, well, Aika kind of giggles at her and just says, really, you think that he would like was a car, you, just because you have such a big rack? This is where, well, Junko blushes and says, yes, he would. This is where, well, they're kind of fighting and whispering at each other. Issei is so confused, and of course, his head already fried a while ago. This is where, well, Drake saying, hey, kid, 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 hey, kid, are you okay? Kid, kid, kid. This is where, well, leave Issei's brother. <laughs> this is where he's screaming at the kid, which they're not really brothers, but really be just acts kind of childish. He's saying, Issei, are you okay? Issei is like being shaked around by Levi, but yeah. This is where, well, we go outside the mindscape of Issei, and of course, this is where, well, a new student kind of enrolled a while ago. Mostly, yeah, a while ago until they got accepted to the school, but yeah. This is where, well, so many people turn their heads when the door opens. Now, of course, we're seeing the situation with Issei, Aika, and Junko. Which most guys got jealous and girls kind of got quite annoyed that the pervert is getting more attention. But yeah. Which they still think he's a pervert, but yeah. So two people actually appear. Now, of course, they're not actually one. They was actually two. Now, of course, they were, well. They both have brownish hair. One has glasses and the other kind of has, well. No glasses, but they have brownish hair. Similar color towards Aika's, but of course their eye color is what they call also similar towards Aika's, mostly olive, but yeah. Now, of course, one has actually two ponytails of brownish uh, hair. Of course, like curl up, but yeah. This is where, well, another one has kind of short brown hair. This is where one has the size of mostly her breast size and mostly the guys, the one with kind of glasses. Kind of looks like Aika. Mostly her breast size is a little bit bigger, well, kind of similar size towards Aika's, and of course the other one is kind of bigger. And this is where, well, so many guys kind of literally smash their desk and saying, damn, twins? Holy, this is where so many people are just smiling at them, kind of lustily and grinning at them. This is where when Aika and Juga turn around, this is where, well, Aika widened her eyes, literally just almost widened, almost like her eyeballs almost pop out of her eye socket. This is where, well, one of the girls who was new kind of just giggles and smiles straight towards Aika. This is where, well, Aika stopped messing around with Issei. And of course, this is where Junko kind of noticed what, uh, what Aika was doing. This is where when she turns around and narrow her eyes towards the two newcomers. This is where, well, Aika sighs and says, those bitches, why are they here? This is where, well, Aika kind of growls at them. Or mostly growls at one of them, but then just looks at the other one with a neutral look. This is where, well, when it was a car, they started kind of, well, introducing themselves. One was named was a car. This is where, well, one of them with glasses says that her name is Myri, and her last name is basically, uh, Kyria. Wait, not Kyria. Well, let's see. So, the glasses say that her name was, was a car, Marina uh, Kiryu. And of course, the other one kind of says that her name is Korea, uh, yeah, Korea, uh, Kiryu. This is where, well, a bunch of guys right now wind their eyes realizing the last name. This is where Aika walks down. And of course, this is where, well, she just glares at both of the newcomers. Well, mostly one who's kind of having such a kind of lustful, kind of sinful grin in her face, mostly glasses one. While the other kind of has some emotionless looks looking straight at Aika. Aika says, what are you two doing here, sisters? This is where, well, a bunch of guys and girls almost just like spit out, wondering, holy shit, Aika has sisters? This is where, well, they're all looking at them, and of course, they can tell, well, mostly by their hair, but when they look at their faces and even eye color, and even, well, mostly, I, mostly items, well, not items on their face, we'll see if all three of them had glasses, yeah, they would look the same, but yeah, but one of them doesn't. This is where, well, they are just widening their eyes and realize, yeah, that's Aika's sisters. This is where the guys right now pale, thinking that they're basically going to tell the measurements that they have. There's three, there's three, what's it called? 
Kiryu's, and of course, they are scared. They are really fucking scared. This is where, well, when Drake heard this in his head, he managed to hear this when he was kind of looking out because his host is literally brain dead and kind of his head is just fried. He kind of just noticed this, and this is where he grins more maliciously. He says, oh, triplets. This is quite interesting. I wonder how he's just going to handle them. Hmm. This is where Issei is still knocked the fuck out, and of course, Levi is trying to wake him up so he can actually wake up, but yeah. This is where, well, I could just kind of glare at the guys, and even what's it called? Well, mostly one of uh, Aika's sisters being what's it called? Miria kind of just looks at them with such a lustful grin, but of course, it might have been evil to them, but yeah. This is where, well, the girl that kind of has an emotional look just looks at them with just me, doesn't care. I could then just kind of grabs both their hands and of course they're pulling them straight to the back just because there's two empty seats and of course Aika doesn't want any guy to get anywhere near her sisters. Even though she hates them, she still loves him. But yeah, this is where, well, Aika mostly, I guess it's just get over here, you damn it. Damn bitches for getting here. This is where, well, Miria says, aw, we're so mean to us, sis. I thought we were triplets. You're so mean, you know that? This is where, well, Miria kind of says the ugly straight towards Mira. Uh, well, not Mira. Mostly Aika. Aika is it. She growls at uh, was it called Miria. This is where Miria just giggles a little bit. This is where, well, Korea is kind of just motionless looking at, well, uh, Aika and even what's it called? Miria's banter. But yeah. This is where, well. Issei is still kind of like, uh, still dazed, but this is where he shakes his head after realizing that Levi has been waking his dad up most of the time. Sorry. This is where, well, Levi says, find it, you're awake. This is where, well, Issei kind of opened his eyes, and this is where he noticed three Aikas. Now, of course, this is where his brain was about to fry it again, and because he thought he was illusioning and was about to black out any damn time, because he thought this was a dream for a second. This is where, well... I could kind of notice Issei finally woken up from his uh, stupor. And of course, this is where, well, he then looks more dumbfounded seeing three Aikas. Well, mostly look like Aikas. And this is where he's just dumbfounded. This is where, well, I guess I can explain. This is where, well, Mira actually appears right in front of what I can say. Ooh, this boy is kind of adorable. This is where, well, Issei's face becomes kind of red and looks away. And this is where, well, Kira noticed his, uh, mostly, he wasn't glancing straight towards him. Or neither they're kind of like, bodies because well mostly Kira noticed that mostly a bunch of guys usually will look at their kind of bodies but yeah because they're kind of lustful and mostly horn dogs but this guy doesn't even look like he wanted to even look at them mostly he looks embarrassed this is where well Aika says get away from him this is where well she grabbed was a camera and just pulled her torso back and just puts her in the chair and this is where well She's still holding out to Kiryu, and of course, mostly puts her in the back also. Next to Mario. Mario is kind of la uh, laughing at Aika, and of course saying, Wow, you're really going to stop us from actually talking to him? You're so mean, Aika. So very mean. This is where Aika just sneers at her and says, Shut the hell up already. This is where, well, Junko is sweat dropping, but yeah. This is where, well, Issei is right now putting his face into the table. Right now, trying to hide his embarrassment. And also the murder intent that mostly a bunch of guys look at him. And of course, Issei doesn't really care about the murder intent because he knows he can beat their ass. But he just doesn't want to fight and have a pointless battle. He wants to play a video game. So sad. But yeah. Now we go into mostly the... Well, next hour. This is where, well, the next hour is, of course, well, mostly arts. And, of course, this is where, well, not arts, we'll see ceramics. And, of course, this is where, well, we go into, well, a competition. Somewhat. Mostly a competition of who did the best ceramics kind of, like, clay project. This is where, well, and number one, it is, well, Noel and Issei's kind of teamwork. Even though they only had two people. It was supposed to be four people, but there was two people because two uh, other people wanted to join another group. But, yeah. This is where, well, both, uh, what's it called, Issei and, well, Noel are kind of standing up next to their kind of clay project, which is a black dragon with, uh, what's it called, silver, 
well not silver mostly gold and, and reddish kind of colors in it but mostly black so of course it's a black western dragon this is where well, drake is still very sad that it's not red or green because he's pissed he hates the fact that he let well mostly his host let the white hair girl to kind of literally paint it which he hates it but yeah but of course this is where well Noel is kind of just kind of getting, well, Sundari in front of the cameras because they're taking pictures. She's like, hmm, this will work well. She's holding on to the project, kind of going, huh, this will work well. Issa, in the other hand, is having a hoodie. Music in his ears because, well, this teacher doesn't really care if you're listening to music or having a hoodie on. And, of course, Issa is looking directly at the camera, not even blinking. Even with the little light flashes in his eyes, he does not blink. He's just over here fucking touching the project but of course they we're hearing music so right now the song that he's hearing is um so the song he's hearing is basically destiny from uh netflix but yeah n-e-f-f-e-x -F -E yeah x now of course this is where uh, <coughs> the song goes i don't believe in destiny i just do what's best for me so yeah he's basically listening to that song and of course this is where uh, he doesn't care. He has both of his earbuds kind of on. Of course, it worked well. He would have had both of them, but this where it well. Noelle did ask for one of them. Now, of course, it does match up with her hair, so of course, it's kind of camouflage. This will work well. She's listening to the song that EC is hearing, which she doesn't really mind, but she does act kind of similar around him, even though she doesn't really want to, but she just doesn't know how to express her feelings. This will work well. EC is kind of listening to music. This will work well. Uh, the teacher did ask Issei if he could put down his hoodie, but Issei didn't really want to, and of course, where the teacher do not really have power to kind of ask him, but he did just kind of just let that happen. Whatever. This is where, well, <coughs> second place went this and that and this and the, yeah. So, that happened. But of course, this is where, well, another project should be done, but this time they will have two weeks to kind of finish it because it's going to be a bigger project. And this time you can have a team up to, well, five people. Now, of course, this kind of did balance, well, everyone. Well, balance him a little bit, but mostly Issei wasn't having what's it called the best team. He still has no well on his team. He just needs three other people. Now. He doesn't want to be bothered with three other people. He hates talking to other people. He actually is kind of antisocial as hell. So, of course, we're, well, he said, fuck it. I'll do the whole damn thing. I don't care. He still is hearing music, so he got this. So, that's what he's thinking. But, yeah. This is where, well, two new people kind of did join up with ceramics. So mostly joined up with the entire school. But of course, it worked when they showed up kind of late because one of them was rushing late already. She showed up with the uniform of the school. And of course, mostly a bunch of guys almost literally lost mostly a lot of blood. Thanks to, well, the fact that she has bluish, like, what's it called? Bluish eyes. This lightish bluish eyes, but her kind of like chest size is pretty big. But of course, it worked well. She also has kind of short hair, but it's red, kind of a lightish red. But yeah, not crimson red. Just lightish red. And of course, where next to her is a girl with kind of longish pinkish hair. Of course, she has kind of pinkish eyes. And her chest size isn't, well, yeah, it's also big. So mostly almost a lot of guys almost fainted. This is where Issa didn't really faint because he's already busy with the project. Like, the teacher said that they can begin any time. He was just wondering how Issa and Noel are going to do this. Now, of course, he was going to let them for having four weeks or three weeks. He didn't mind because he knows how EC is quite antisocial. He hates talking to other people. Of course, talking to Noel, he's fine with it because, well, yeah. But talking to more than just one person, he's antisocial as hell. This is where EC, he noticed that what they were doing, the project is mostly to make whatever is in your imagination it's mostly base theme. The theme is based on what's it called? Um, anything it can be, what's it called? Cybrick. Well, it can be like, it's mostly the project is world building. That's what it is. It can be anything. It can be pirates related or whatever. Cypher related. It doesn't matter. <coughs> this is where, well, 
EC is literally kind of already building his shit. This is where he already has kind of these like blocks of what's it called? Mostly, well, mostly he has the blocks of clay, and of course he's already starting. This is where Noel's confusing what to build because mostly EC said you can build whatever. This is just gonna be a mix of random stuff. This is where well he said that he wants to kind of divide. Well, he wants to make a tower in the middle of this place. Now, of course, there's going to be five sections to explain to Noel, and of course, these five sections just have to be different types, just different types of worlds, because he wants to kind of make them also kind of be connected to the tower, and of course, blah, blah, blah. Now, of course, the one thing that he's making his section kind of be is kind of, well, kind of pir uh, well, not pirating. He's kind of making his section kind of, well, like, uh, well, mostly, uh, how should I say? So mostly he's putting his kind of own spot, kind of dragon-like, like there's a bunch of dragons kind of flying around. So yeah, he's kind of creating dragons. This is where Noel is trying to think of what to do. This is where, well, Issa literally explained that can be her own house, own, own hometown, or whatever originally she, yeah, she came from. This is where, well, Noel started actually kind of doing that. Even though she's not great at, hey, projects, she will try her best. But yeah, since there's uh, three other spots that they have to fill. Now, of course, this is where when the two students actually appear, this is where, well, they were kind of dumbfounded because uh, the teacher says, well, since you really don't, do you guys have any experience with clay? This is where they said ish, kind of, maybe when they were younger, but this is where the teacher decided to assign them towards mostly the table that has the silverish white haired girl and the guy with the hood. <laughs> this is where, well, you see it's right now hearing music and the song that he's hearing is what they call. So the song that actually appeared next was mostly called Monster by Shinedown. And of course, it says, good for you, you for everybody. So you get the point, right? So of course, it worked. well, he says hair and music, and this worked well. Noel doesn't mind the song. It's just like, there's a lot of different songs that he hears. It's either rap or other stuff, but yeah. This is where, well, he says kind of listening to the song. And of course, he's already making like his third dragon, but yeah. This is where, well, he's already kind of detailed enough with two of the dragons, but yeah, mostly with smaller dragon, with the bigger dragon kind of being like the father of this like small dragon, but yeah. No, of course, it worked well. Drake said, Are you gonna make me win? Issa says, No, fuck you. This is where Drake says, Come on, brat. You can't be like that. Fuck you, too. This is where, well. Issei is going to make what's called a western kind of dragon side, while on the other side kind of like parallel to uh, mostly kind of like non-parallel parallel, uh, parallel towards the other one mostly in front of him because since he doesn't really have three other people, he was thinking of making an easter side of the dragons. Mostly an eastern kind of dragons, mostly those kind of like slithery dragons, but yeah, like Japanese or whatever. This is where, well, two other people kind of appear saying hello. This is where Noel kind of uh, looks up after kind of trying to figure out how to do this. And this is where, well, she kind of noticed well, one of the girls being having pink hair and dark pink eyes. And this is where, well, Noel kind of noticed the other girl kind of having reddish hair and kind of bluish eyes. This is where, well, Noel gets, like, gets up. And this is where she like jumps onto both of them. And this is where she says, Rebecca, Holland, you're here. This is where, well, they kind of say, uh, well, um... Don't you think this is a little awkward to jump on your two friends and literally kind of says that we're here? This is where, well, no well kind of blushes to say, okay, leave me alone. This is where, well, both Colin and both Rebecca kind of giggles and ch ch just chuckles at, well, Noel's antics, but yeah. This is where, well, Noel kind of goes, me, 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 whatever. This is where, well, she then asks him, why are you two here? This is where, well, Colin says that basically her, uh, mostly family wanted to move here. And this is where, well, Rebecca says, same. My royalty family from the, what's it called, western side really decides to move here. I don't know why. Probably because they noticed that you were here. <coughs> this is where, well, you know what says? I guess you're right. <laughs> this is where, well. Uh, both Colin and, well, Rebecca Swatch off at, what's it called, Noel. Noel's acting a little bit more true earthful and less synthetic, which a bunch of people notices. And, of course, multiple guys wanted to put cameras and, of course, start to take pictures. 
Issei notices, but Issei kind of like made with his clay. Very fast, he made Senbons, and of course he throws them so fast that none, none of the guys noticed that their cameras didn't work because literally a Senbon literally just went through it and just like sliced the camera lens. Now of course, when they kind of turn around to see the camera, they see that's kind of having a huge crack. A huge like straight line crack. This is where they say, when the, what the? They're looking around and of course confused. Now of course the girls kind of notice the guys having their cameras out and of course the girls want to beat the shit of the guys now. This is where the guys switch up now. This is where, well, we go into EC still making his dragon. And of course, there's like huge pile of clay right now blocking mostly anyone's sight from seeing him. But yeah, this is where, well, they mostly Noel and uh, what's it called? Rebecca and Colin noticed, well, mostly they noticed Noel kind of having no one with her. So of course they ask her if she's by herself on a team. This is where Noelle realized that they kind of, it kind of does look like she's on by herself. She says, no, not really. This is where, well, they kind of noticed the earbud that she had in her ear. And of course, the where, well, Colin thought it'd be a good idea to kind of take it out of her ear to hear what kind of song she's hearing. This is where, well, Colin does manage to take it out of her ear. And this is where, well, Noelle says, well, what, are, what are you doing? This is where, well, Colin says, well, you've been hearing music. So let me see, let me see what kind of song you're hearing, hmm? Mostly the song that Colin started hearing because EC's like playlist is like going down, but yeah, because it's been kind of like three minutes of her talking and it kind of went on to another song called Lincoln. Well, mostly not Lincoln Park. Mostly the song is says Somewhere I Belong, and of course, this is where, well, it's made by Lincoln Park. This is where, well, the song, uh, well, mostly the first like lines it kind of begins is When I begin, I had nothing to say. Um, and I get lost in the nothingness uh, inside of me. I was confused. <laughs> this is where, well, it goes on and yeah, this is where, well, Colin starts hearing the song. And of course, she's actually liking the rhythm and the beat. And this is where, well, she's actually kind of falling in love. And this is where, well, she then goes up and kind of gives it to us. What's it called? Rebecca. And Rebecca's hearing kind of the next lines and that being, well, this is where, well, uh, the song goes, I want to, I want to heal. I want to feel. That the, well, mostly, <laughs> that was, that the feel was never real, that, well, that feeling was never real, and of course it goes on, I want to let go of all the pain in a race, or whatever, and yeah, you get the point. This is where, well, Rebecca's saying, that's actually pretty good. This is where, well, Colin says, right, so, Noel, where's your phone at? This is where Noel kind of pulls it out and says, yeah. This is where, well, they kind of like, well, mostly Colin managed to grab fast, and this is where she turns it on, this is where she tries to score around. And sees that this is it's not really connected. This is where well, she says, "Uh, where are you getting the music from?" This is where they look both confused and Noel. Noel kind of looks embarrassed and says, "Oh, oh, uh, well, my second teammate here." This is where they say, "You have a second teammate? Where is he? Behind all that clay project?" This is where Ese is literally hearing into music and not caring too much. This is where Ese is already making like his fifth dragon. He's making this big ass dragon like if it was a king of all dragons, but yeah. This is where, well. So the Scott, uh, but, so of course, not Scott. The song actually kind of got skipped because Issei was hearing another one because he actually liked it when he was looking over his phone. Uh, bleh, not phone. Phone. Bleh, I can't speak. But of course, the song is called Breaking the Habits. And of course, made by Linkin Park, of course. And of course, the song goes, Consuming Memories. Wait. So, no, I, I fucked that up. Memories consume like opening up a wound. Uh, what's it called? L uh, picking me apart, assuming that I'm safe inside my room, which I'm not, but yeah. That's what it says, but yeah. It goes on from there, but yeah, he's singing it. Kind of mumbling, but of course, he's still singing it. And of course, he's already making his, like, big-ass dragon. And of course, it worked well. When the girls kind of notice when looking over, they kind of already hear Issei kind of singing. And of course, he does have a beautiful song, but mostly, like, singing voice. But yeah, no one else blushing because she kind of remember hearing about this from some of the other girls. And mostly rumors. This is where, well, Issei is singing. And of course, not paying attention that he noticed that there's actually people watching him. Mostly three girls. That being Noel and mostly two others. <laughs> this is where, well, <laughs> this is where, uh, he's actually singing. And of course, it where, well, he's actually kind of, when he kind of like, well, mostly 
He grabs like this wet towel and of course just clean his hands and then picks his phone up and kind of like looks at the time to see how much time he has. He has only about like, well, 10 minutes left. So of course he's thinking of best to just clean up. This is where, well, he starts kind of putting all the dragons into mostly the positions in like in the battlefield of the clay kind of world building that he's doing. But yep. Yeah. And of course, in work, well, the bigger dragon, he kind of makes like a wall behind it so he can attach the dragon to it. Like if he's coming out from a portal, but yeah. This is work, well. The other dragons are kind of being like around like just the playing field, but yeah. This is work, well. He just started attaching them. And this is work, well. He then kind of looks up and notices, well, three girls looking at him Noel, uh, Rebecca, and also, well, we'll see uh, what's it called. Colin. Now, of course, Rebecca and Colin, he doesn't really know. But, of course, where he says, uh, can I help you, Noel? This is where Noel says, uh, yes, sorry about looking at you. It's just I was, uh, trying to get exploration to figure out what I was going to do. This is where, well, she kind of lied, but it wasn't halfly a lie. It was actually true, but yeah. This is where, well, he says, oh, if you want me to help you, I can. This is where, well, he said, kind of gets up and notice the two girls. And, of course, gets embarrassed a little bit. This is where, well, Colin says, Holy cow. <laughs> this is where, well, she kind of grabs Easy hand and Easy gets embarrassed a little bit. This is where, well, Colin says, that was amazing. You're actually pretty good at singing. And the songs you listen, that's actually really sick. Damn, you have actually a sick playlist. Can I actually listen more to the songs? Can I actually know what kind of playlist you have? This is where, well, Easy said, um, um, uh. This is where, well, Noel realized that Easy is kind of being stuttery a little bit. Even though he doesn't really act stuttery, he just... Yeah, he's anti-social cell. And of course, having six growth, uh, mostly girls that are friends, he kind of acts a little bit more sturdy, but yeah. Because, well, Drake has been nothing but just dirty-minded. And been nothing but just telling him to do it. Do the deed. Is this where, well, Issa usually hates him, but yeah. This is where, well, uh, Issa says, sure. This is where he pulls out his playlist, and of course, it's mostly... The playlist was mostly not in the playlist. It was right now just listening to a bunch of Linkin Park songs. But yeah, because he kind of went to Linkin Park just to hear a bunch of their songs. This is where, well, Colin says Linkin Park. So I guess that's the studio's name. Yep. This is where Issei starts talking. This is where, well, he's actually quite com uh, comfortable in actually talking to, well, Colin. Even though she's a female and, of course, pretty close to him. But yeah, mostly, like, really close. This is where, well... Noelle kind of noticed that Colin might be trying to take him away. This is where, well, she kind of gets jealous. Now, of course, Rebecca noticed Noelle's jealousy. This is where Rebecca kind of blushes a little bit, thinking, well, this is where when she looks at Issa, he's not much of a bad-looking person. So, of course, this is where, well, she doesn't really want to take if Noelle and Issa are a thing. She doesn't really want to take that away, but she doesn't know about Colin. So, yeah. This is where, well, we go into mostly Issei getting to his next class, and yeah, just like next classes, but yeah. This is where, well, we go into mostly Issei, uh, was it called? Wait. He's in his, like, what's it called, English kind of literature, and of course, this is where, well, a girl actually appears. Yes, she's not really a new student, but she's always been here, but of course, she just kind of changed from kind of a uh, Spanish class because she kind of got more confused in Spanish class. So, of course, she's taking in English literature. This is where, well, the person has kind of black, like, longish hair. Of course, it's where a reddish eye, one reddish eye, one eye that's covered up by, like, a bandage eye patch, like a white eye patch. And, of course, it's where, well, she's quite nervous. She does wear the school uniform and, of course, acts quite shy. Now, of course, mostly a bunch of guys have kind of a uh, fetish for that, but yeah. Now, of course, they were, well, she's sitting next to Issei. Now, Issei doesn't know who this girl is, but he knows pretty much that she's in the same grade as his. Being that, uh, well, being sophomore, but yeah. This is where, well, she then says hello that her name is Karumi. Well, mostly Karumi, um. So, her name is uh, Karumi Tokasaki, and of course, where, well, she's kind of just smiling a little bit at Issei, and of course, trying to learn English, but she's also very confused. This is where Issei tries to teach her. Now, yeah, because he, you see here, Issei is not that dumb. He's actually, he knows a quite bit of languages, 
That being was a uh, Japanese is main one, English, and of course others like German and Russian. But yeah, he uses Russian just to troll people because he thinks fuck them. But yeah. Now of course we well, we go into mostly well, uh, what's it called? Next classes, and of course, well, not next classes, it's lunchroom time, well, lunch time, and of course, Issei is right now on top of the roof, kind of, like, laying down, he's not taking a nap, because he's not tired, because he did have a fortnight of sleep, from yesterday, pretty much, the girls discover who, what he truly looks like, and of course, does it work well, he kind of just said, fuck it, let me go to sleep, not play any video games, <laughs> Which mostly, in that mindset, mostly was the car Drake was like, oh my god. He's not playing video games! Yes, I can nap! But yeah. Now, of course, he can nap or he can try to tease Issei. But Issei managed to disconnect him really fast before even one tease. One utter of teasing at Issei. This is where, well, we go into mostly, well, Issei being, well, let's go back to Issei kind of being on top of the roof. Now, of course, Issei isn't really eating because he doesn't, he doesn't really get any food, either from the lunchroom or anything. He's just kind of laying there, and of course, where, well, he kind of sighs. Of course, he feels hungry now. He's like, why the fuck do I feel hungry? Fuck, I should have probably got food. Issei is really thinking of just ditching school now, just to kind of go get food. But before kind of getting up, he kind of felt some people kind of coming up. That's where, well, he kind of, well, just ignored it. Well, not coming up. He didn't really felt them kind of coming up. This is where, well, he already felt someone's energy presence different. This is where, well, <sighs> Issei, this is where Issei gets up. It's not mostly the girls are coming up, or even Rhea's grammary, thank God. He doesn't even know where the fuck she's at. Maybe she's depressed from the fact that he rejected her brother's proposition, and he doesn't care. He doesn't even have any emotions to care that much. But this is where, well, Issei says, come out. I know you're here. This is where he says this person's name. Come out, Uriya Ushida. This is where, well, he says the person's name. And of course, this person is right now kind of appearing right in front of him. Well, mostly right kind of like five feet away from him. But of course, it were kind of near the door. And this is where, well, Ushida says, oh, well, we'll see. Now, Ushida, oh, uh, wait. Ishida kind of says, oh, so you notice me, or Uriya, that's what his actual first name is Uriya and his last name is Ishida, but yeah, Uriya says, so you managed to notice me, scoff, he kind of just scoffs and says, didn't expect a demon like you to actually notice me, Issei, that's where, well, Issei scoffs and says, Uriya, what the hell are you doing here, actually, no, better question, what the fuck are you doing in this school, well, if you haven't noticed, I am wearing the uniform of the school of boys, very professionally, like actually wearing it properly. This is where he's actually wearing it properly, like having the black blazer. Yeah, you get the point. He doesn't have it unzipped. This is where, well, if you're thinking of uh, Uriya Ushida from uh, Bleach, yes, this person basically looks like him. This is where, well, Issei scoffs and says, okay, what are you doing here? This is where, well, Issei kind of asks him, oh, you know, I only came here to make sure that a demon like you doesn't go rampage. <coughs> Issei looks at him and says, It was one fucking time. One fucking time. That's when you pissed me the fuck off. Do you think I'm going to go rampage now? I'm not an idiot. This is where, well, who do she, Uriya says, I'm just making sure. Don't know if you're going to go rampage and hurt people that you might care about. <sighs> Uriya. What are you actually here for? To actually piss me off or to actually just kind of bother me and stalk me like a creepy ass stalker? Uriya kind of chuckles and says, stalker you say? No, I'm not a stalker. I'm a watcher. Basically the definition of a stalker, Issei said. This is where Uriya kind of goes, uh, uh. Well, no, you idiot. Dude, I'm not into dudes, Issei said. I truly am not into dudes. Leave me alone, Issei said. Uriya said, ah. You idiot! I'm not talking about like that! This is where, oh, Issei says, please, go away, go away, I'm not into dudes, go away. This is where, well, Issei is literally just putting his hand in front of him and trying to, like, shoo him away. So what do you say? I'm not here to say it like that. But I'm here, I'm actually here to stop you, demon. 
Why just stop me? There's clearly other devils in this school. Go bother them. This is where, well, what do you guys say? What, that, um, mm. Are you just here just because you're really a creepy stalker and you won't stop bothering me? Dude, the, we, didn't we actually have an agreement to stop, well, to stop this whole stupid rivalry fight in middle school? What do you say? Uh, yes. Then fuck off. Where's that whole fucking... No, I remember still having that shit on. So, fuck off, Uriye. This is what Uriye says. You see here, you see. You don't have a choice. You're going to have to fight me. I want to know with the demon that you have inside versus my power. Who is stronger? If I tell you that your Quincy power is stronger, can you fuck off and leave me alone? Is or are you going to go... No. Show me what you have, Issei. Hyoto. This is where, well, Issei said, not really in the mood to be dealing with your shit because I'm hungry. Unless you're going to buy me food after kicking your ass. Uriya says, ha, why would I fucking buy, why would I lose and uh, lose to someone like you? I can't lose. I got him much stronger. This is where he activated his bow. Like from his hand, make a blue bow. And this is where he says, Wow, you made a blue bow. Seems like similar the same that like every other bow that I have seen from you. This is where, well, Udia just scoffs and says, Let me show you what I can do. This is where, well, he said, Notice other presents kind of getting up. This is where he says, Okay, we're not having time for this. Get the hell out before other people notice you kind of doing this. Udia kind of actually noticed what's called other presents. And of course, Udia scoffs and says, fine, I'll be leaving then. But until next time, I will get my revenge. You will fight me. Issei said, no, I won't. This is sound kind of gay as hell, so fuck off. This is where Udia scoffs and just like disappears. Issei sighs, and of course, this is where the door opens. Mostly, a lot of people actually started appearing, mostly a crowd of females. Now, of course, it's his six friends, six female friends, but also, well other people that he kind of met throughout this day but yeah mostly he kind of meets up with six other females now of course one has actually greenish hair and blue and greenish eyes and of course kind of wearing the school uniform but mostly it's kind of being really tight on her kind of body which makes it way too seductive but of course her name is Fubuki. this is where well other people that he kind of met throughout this whole school day a girl with pinkish hair, pinkish eyes named Rebecca. A girl with kind of reddish hair, bluish eyes named Colin. Colin, uh, what's it called? Named Colin Staffy. Uh, well, yeah, Colin Staffy. And of course, it worked well. Uh, a girl with kind of, yeah, mostly pinkish hair going, going to be Rebecca. And of course, it's where two girls that are kind of similar to the same as Aika. Just their mostly hairstyles are different and, yeah. But of course, one is named uh, Karun. Yeah, Karun and, of course, Mira. And, of course, in the girl with blackish hair, one reddish eye, one being covered up. And her name is Karumi uh, Toshiki. But, yeah. This is where, well. So, this is basically all of the girls and mostly at once. So, Junko, yeah, you get the point. So, he knows six of the girls while he barely knows the other girls. But, yeah. Mostly Rebecca, Colin, uh, what's it called? Karumi Toshi and these two twins and Fubuki. But, yeah. But pretty much, he kind of uh, just met them recently, except for Fubuki. Fubuki, he just met her just now, but yeah. Fubuki is like right next to what's it called, mostly SF, but yeah, like if they're talking, like they're best friends for a while, because they have been. They have just moved a while recently ago, so yeah. Now, of course, it's where, well, they're all talking, and of course, you say swear dropping. Issei is thinking to just sneak by them because either they haven't noticed him or they're just ignoring him. Which he doesn't mind either way. He's just going to just sneak by them so they won't actually notice him. And kind of bother him to kind of reveal his well, mostly hair color and even eye color straight towards the six new girls. This is where well, he's swatched off but of course he tries to sneak by and now we're ready not to go and fight Uri, uh, Urihara. Yeah, Uriya, uh, Ishidi. Now, of course, he should have just fought him. He should have just fucking kicked his ass and just got food from him. Fuck. Now he has to sneak by and make sure that his stomach doesn't growl and actually get caught. Now, of course, Issei is literally sneaking by 
getting through. Of course, he was about to get to the door until he got his kind of collar grab. This is where Issei turns around and sees none other, well, none other than Ike kind of pulling on his collar. This is where I can say, where do you think you're going, Issei? Issei switch off and say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go get food. I, I didn't really get food at the lunchroom. So, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of starving. And, uh, yeah, don't mind me. I'm, I'm just going. This is where Issei is sweat dropping, hoping that Aika will kind of believe it so he can go and disappear. And, yeah, this is where Aika says, oh, if you want food, then I don't really mind sharing. This is where, well, Issei sweat drops and wasn't actually expecting Aika to kind of share food with him. This is where, well, the other girls do kind of unpack some food boxes and bentos. And this is where, well, they kind of tried to share with Issei. And Issei was actually scared and confused. This is where Drake says, yeah, boy, go do the deed with all of them. They're all so freaking amazing. You got this, kid. You got this. You know you do. You got this, kid. You know you want to. Do it, kid. Do the deed. This is where, well, they even say, shut up. God damn, I'm trying to fall asleep and you're literally, you won't shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Kid, just ignore this big ass, giant ass lizard. I'm trying to literally go to sleep, not be bothered. So ignore him. He says, hey, disconnect. This is where, well, Drix says, no, Libby, why? Why will you disconnect us? No, I need to. There's too many beautiful girls and Issei won't know what to do. He won't know when to choose. What if, what if, what if they all tried to attack him? I'm, I need to help him. He said, this is where Libby switched up and say, The fuck? Help him? You've been bothering him the whole damn time. With a different female question and of course saying that he should be doing this or doing that. The fuck do you mean helping him? Mostly helping him in embarrassment or death? Go away. This is where Drake said, fine. Fuck you, you freaking demon brat. Whatever, man. Go away. That's where, well, mostly Drake scoffs and just walks away. This is where we go into mostly Issei kind of eating food. Now, of course, he's eating stuff in his mouth with different, like, foods. Which he tries to just eat it all, but yeah. But of course, the where, well, Issei is kind of, like, being bothered by them. Well, not really. Mostly they're kind of just feeding him, but yeah. Now, of course, some of the girls are giggling at his kind of reaction of being stuffed, but yeah. But this is where I could kind of notice was a combo. We'll see, two, well, mostly one of her sisters that surprised her because she thought she was emotionless. Get really close towards Issei. This is where, well, Issei was very confused, but this is where, well, she grabbed him from the face and said, Have you ever had your first, well, this is where Issei says, my first, what? This is where, well. I can notice what she was doing, and of course, grab her from the collar and pull her away from, well, Issei, but yeah. Issei was confused, but this is where Issei was just also kind of embarrassed because she was really fucking close to him. But he was like, what? This is where, well, mostly it was a call. All of them are kind of just looking and glaring at what's called Aika's sister. And of course, this is where, well, Aika says, you're not doing that. This is where, well, Karuni kind of says... Why not? You haven't actually tried, have you? This is where, well, he says, now thinking that he feels danger. He actually, like, has this danger sense that now to get out. So, of course, this is where, well, he's now saying, okay, well, this has been fun. He looks at all the girls and says, well, this hasn't been fun. But I'm thinking of going to, uh, to the bathroom. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna go use the bathroom. So, I, uh, I'll see you guys, uh, girls, later, okay? This is where, well, Issei was about to get up until mostly he then got pushed back down. This is where Issei sweat dropping. Because he now sees all the girls and all of them kind of has, well, different hearts in their eyes. Issei sweat drops and says, um, what are you doing? This is where, well, they say, you're not going anywhere. This is where Issei sweat drops and this is where Issei says, come on, I, 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 uh, this is where Issei sweat dropping. This is where, well, Aika pulls out this, like, bottle of water. To mostly undye his hair. And this is where, well, he says it. Wait, I, can, I know what that is. No, 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 please, please, please. No, don't do this. You don't need to show the other girls about who I am. This is where, well. I could say, stop moving. This is where, well. She then slap her fingers. And of course, Junko, as the, and of course, Katakuri, yeah, Katakuri. And of course, mostly, uh, well, mostly, uh, what's it called? 
mostly hold on to him by pushing him down. Mostly, uh, also, Noel was pushing him down. This is where, well, he said he was confused until his hair was literally tied. And, of course, mostly the eye lenses were taken out of its eye thanks to mostly Ica's precision. But, yeah, this is where, well, he said he switched off. And, of course, his hair is showing to be ash blonde. Yeah, ash blonde. And, of course, his eyes is one emerald green and one sapphire blue. Now, of course, all the girls are still loving his eye color. And, of course, his hair color, actually. But, yeah. This is where Issei is sweat dropping and asks Aika why. But this is where Aika said, because I wanted to. And you couldn't stop me, could you? This is where Issei is heard the seductive in her voice. And this is where Issei said, um, what is happening? This is where, well, Aika says, don't worry what is happening, Issei. This is where Aika makes a magic circle of pierce, and this is where Issei switch off, realizing they know about the supernatural. It's just, do they know about him being a supernatural being, or mostly having a supernatural being? Now, of course, where, well, all of them make sure that Issei couldn't escape because, well, magic circles appear all around him. And, of course, it where, well, it didn't feel kind of demonic or fallen angels, what, somewhat, not really. Well, some of them did feel kind of fallen angels, somewhat. But, of course, some of the others kind of felt human or even, well, mostly Aika kind of felt kind of demonic for some reason. But also, well, none of them really, well, kind of felt angel-like, but yeah. So, of course, the word, well, all of them kind of make magic circles to stop him from actually leaving. And, of course, the word, well, they all then just get blankets and put them around Issei. And Issei was confused and saying, what is happening? He's sweat dropping right now. This is where, well, Aika says, Well, since you made all of us kind of happy in being around you, you're going to have to take our kind of valuables. This is where Issei sweat drops and says, Wait, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? This is where, well, she kind of grabs him from the face and kind of just like, Well, they both connect, but yeah. This is where, well, Issei and, well, mostly Aiko were kind of, yeah, connecting. This is where Issei's eyes widen in an instant. And, of course, he almost kind of passed the hell out. His brain was almost fried. Well, this is where, well, the next couple of girls kind of also did take us, well, mostly second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth kiss. This is where, well, Mostly the 12th, well, mostly the 11th kiss was actually twice by mostly, not even the same girl, but by her twin sister, but yeah. Now, of course, it worked. well, Issei was literally brain, his, like, brain just fried in an instant. He also did have a blood nose and was dying, but yeah. He says, goodbye, cruel world. Well, I guess it was cruel, but I'm done. That's the word, well, Issei just kind of shuts up, but yeah. That's the word, well, they are giggling at what Issei is doing. Now, of course, he said they pull out a kind of, well, sleepy mask and just puts it on his face and says, Goodbye, cruel world. All I see is black. This is where, well, a song, well, he was kind of hearing music somewhat. So the song is called Last of the Real Ones. Uh, was it called by Fallen, well, yeah, uh, what's it called? So Fallen Out Boys, and of course, this is where, well, I am the last real one, the, the, the universe, child of the universe or whatever. And of course, where, well, he's listening to that song while passing the fuck out to the afterlife. But yeah. <laughs> so of course, it's where, well, he's literally dying. And of course, it's where, well, everyone is kind of giggling at his reaction. Now, of course, it's where, well, now, of course, it's where, well, and they kind of just see him literally kind of falling asleep, like into bliss. But yeah, this is where, well. We go into mostly about a time skip about three hours later. Issei woke up and of course this is where he remembers everything still because even though they tried to erase his memories, yet yeah, Issei still remembers because he's not an idiot. Yes, he has anti-magic seals on his brain so he can erase, well mostly erase the erasing magic that was supposed to be put on him, but yeah. Now of course the girl thinks that he didn't have his first kiss, but... They also kind of, well, they didn't really do anything else to him. Just kind of watch him sleep and pass the fuck out. But, yeah. But, of course, they tried to erase his memories. But, yeah, thinking that Issei is not from the supernatural. Even though they took him a really a really good liking to him, they still kind of really expose him to the supernatural. Because they think he's not really a part of the supernatural. 
Now, of course, is where, well, we go into Issei and kind of saying, well, that's the weirdest fucking dream. Not really. He already remembers everything. Libby says, kid, 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 they did try to erase their memories. One problem for them. They don't know they are already a part of the supernatural. The hell I am. I am a part of going to sleep and play video games. Haha, <laughs> I can just lie to them, thinking that I don't remember anything. Good to know, kid. There's a word. Well, Drake says, yes, good to know. Then you can make them all yours at once. This is where, well, the first step was definitely making out with them. Now, the second step. This is where I used to say, okay, I'm gonna disconnect you, but I'm gonna talk to Libby, though. This is where Drake says, no, you bastard. This is where Issei is talking to Libby, and Libby says, so, it seems that that Quincy bastard is going to try to fight us. Are we really gonna kick his ass? Hell yes. This is where, well, Issei said straight to Libby. Libby says, okay, then let's do it then. This is where, well, Issei kind of said, yes. Well, let's go then. This is where, well, it's been three hours and yes, he was on top of the roof. This is where school is already over. This is where he was about to leave, which he has. It's just before leaving, someone grabbed his wrist because he was about to like jump on, well, he was already on top of the roof and just climbing. And this is where someone grabbed his wrist and pulled him back. This is where, well, Issei turns around, he sees someone with crimson red hair and bluish eyes, literally trying to take his lips. This is where Issei said, oh, hell no. Issei managed to kind of, well, mostly do some reflex dodging moves to literally dodge her kind of attempt. And Issei says, first of all, fuck no, you're not doing that. This is where Arita corrals at him and says, let me be your 12th, okay, or 13th. I don't care. Those girls, those damn, those damn witches dare to take you away from me. Issei said, okay, first of all, we never had a thing together, Rias. There was nothing between us. You tried to kill me once by, yeah, you get the point. You tried to kill me once and that didn't really work out. So fuck off. I'm not your pawn. I'm nothing to you. So fuck off, you damn devil. You she devil. You she devil. This is where she growls at Issei. This is where Issei said, besides... Come on and try to take me out then. This is where Issei activated his, well, summon out a sword called a Demon Slasher. And this is where, well, Issei said, bring it on. Let's see if you can take me out then. This is where, well, Noel, she, no, uh, not Noel, most of you, Rias knows that she doesn't really have any chance against when he uses anti-magic. Or even against him in physical combat. So, of course, this is where, well, Rias glares at him and says, fine, I'll be going. This is where, well, she teleports and Issei said, yeah, go fuck off. <laughs> this is where, well, Issei kind of then just puts it back into his grimoire. And this is where, well, he then says, Levy, yes. This is where Issei right now activates into double, well, not double union, mostly a demonic form that has one wing so it can fly, but yeah. This is where, well, he's flying towards his house. Now, of course, no one really can sense him because in this form, he erases any magic sense, so yeah. And since it's already turning dark, he got to his house pretty easily. This is where, well, he landed down. And of course, this is where, well, he's getting towards his room. And of course, decides to take a nap. But yeah. Well, mostly play video games and then take a nap. But yeah. This is where, well, someone noticed. The only person that noticed him was none other than, well, a Quincy. This is where he was kind of mostly going out late, kind of hunting. And he noticed Issei. This is where, well, he scoffs and see Issei's demonic form. He knows that Issei's not in berserker form, but he doesn't care. <sighs> he then goes off to kind of hunt on some strays that he kind of noticed around here in this town. This is where, well, we go into Issei kind of getting... Oh well, yeah, you get the point. This is where the next day happens, and of course, the next day is the school being in council for some reason. But yeah, this is where, well, Issei kind of meets up at a park. Well, kind of bumps in towards a girl that's a nun. But, of course, the word, well, the girl kind of has blondish hair. And, of course, the word greenish eyes. She seems to be really, like, cute and innocent. But Issei doesn't care that much. He almost broke his precious video game. Yes, he was at the park with a bag of a video game. But, yeah, he was like, no, my video game! You! That's where he said wanted to kill the person. But, yeah, realized it's a nun. But still, he was crying about his video game. 
rip to that RP game. But yeah, well, RP I, R, I P for the video game. The video game that he was literally about to play was a kind of new Pokemon gen. But yeah, this is where well, he says fine. This is where well, he asked the girl if she's fine, and she started talking in Italian. Now, of course, he should never really learn Italian that much. He only knows broken pieces. So, of course, just to confuse the girl, just because, fuck it. He then speaks in Russian. This is where, well, she goes, uh, huh? She knows a little bit of Japanese. It's just when this person started speaking in Russian, she was just lost. What? This is where you see chuckles and says, nah, are you okay? This is where he speaks in this Italian voice that's kind of broken as hell. Sounds like a goddamn mafia boss and said. This is where, well, she gets kind of scared after hearing the accent kind of sound like a mafia boss. This is where, well, she says, uh, I'm looking for uh, the church. This is where, well, he says, say, so let me help you then. Uh, what the hell did I sound like Luigi then? <laughs> Screw it. You get the point. So, of course, this is where, well, he say is kind of showing her around. And, of course, this is where, well, she is going to the church, which she gets there. And, yeah, this is where you say has a kind of weird feeling not letting her go to the church. But of course, where he uses key sense to find someone, and of course, found them. This is where, well, Issei then says, Well, bye, uh, Asia, I'll be going. This is where, well, Issei disappears, kind of going away. Mostly, he's just walking away, but yeah. Asia says, Thank you. This is where she walks away. But Issei then appears right in front of the car, someone with an arrow. A bow and arrow about to shoot a target. Mostly, a straight devil from far away. Issei grabs the arrow and just tosses it so fast. Well, mostly straight toward the devil, he like grabbed it, of course, holding onto his hand, but then adding some anti magic and stabbing upon the well, mostly straight devil. This is what Uriya says I didn't need your help, devil. What too fucking bad. I'm here for you to do a request. I don't do requests for devils. What too fucking bad. The request is to help out a nun. I have a weird feeling that the nun is going to be killed. This is where Uriya turns around and says, what do you mean? A nun? Why would a nun be here? There's not really the church is burning incompatible. Unless unless she was taken on by a fallen angel. <sighs> Fine. Just because I don't really like nuns getting hurt. Good. I know you have a good personality then. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you too, you fucking Quincy. Now of course it worked well. They disappear in an instant. This is where Uriya kind of has wings of like these bluish light wings. And of course, Issei right now has black wings. But of course, they disappear in an instant towards the, well, church. Now, of course, they don't know when is the perfect time to get her. And of course, just get her away from the church. Because they don't really have a plan to kind of bring her towards somewhere. But yeah, this is where, well, Uriya says, when the hell do you want to attack? Huh. Since there's no school today, probably today. This is where, well. Okay, fine. This is where, well, we go into the night because, yeah, that would probably be the best time. And this is where, well, Uri and even Issei are going. Now, Issei has his grimoire, and of course, Uri has a demon slasher. And this is where, well, Uri kind of has his bow and ready to just snipe out so many people. But yeah. But this is where they feel this strange energy. Now, of course, this is where, well, Issei kind of felt a strange, powerful key in magic sense. But of course, he jumps into the shadows and even Udian. Now, of course, they disappear their weapons. But this is where they see this fallen angel with ten wings. And of course, such a powerful sense. This is where, well, he doesn't sense the two humans or mostly two human likes. But of course, this is where, well, the fallen angel is named Cocobiel. The general of kind of the fallen angels. And of course, where well, he then tells some of the fallen angels that were in the church to bring the girl that's kind of named Ozzy Argento towards the school. So he can take out the sacred gear and then use the Excalibur to fuse it with the Excalibur to make it such a powerful weapon to slaughter the two devil heiresses. And then blame it on the church and then have a war happening. <laughs> This is where, well, he's chuckling. And this is where the fallen angels that were there were mostly an older looking man with a fedora on and having eight wings. And of course, two other fallen angels that have, well, a pair of six wings. But yeah, this is where, well, they do bring Ozzy Argento. And of course, this is where Freed is coming along. Now Freed is in, kick, 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 cow. I get to kill devil scums. Ha <laughs> ha. This is where uh, Ozzy, Ozzy was already passed out. She really couldn't even fight back because she was knocked out. But yeah. This is where, well, 
they see this happening, and of course, they work well. Issei and Uriya are saying, what the fuck do we do? The fuck should I know? Issei says, so they're going to the school. It might be a problem. <sighs> That's just because I hate this. Fine, let's do this. What, are we really going to show off our powers? What happened if the devil errors is kind of noticed? Well, they already know about me since I almost kicked the shit out of well, four mouths. You idiot. Did you die? Well, motherfucker, am I alive in front of you? No. Udia kind of just said. He said, say, fuck you. Now, of course, they, were, well, they actually disappear and, of course, go into the school. Now, of course, they were, well, some people kind of went to the school in an instant just because, yeah. Of course, they were, well, some of the devil errors are there, mostly Rias and what's it called, Sona. But of course, other people are there, mostly some humans that are actually mages. And they're only helping the devils because they notice Coco Bill and they might destroy this town. This is where, well, some of the heiresses from actually powerful clans, from humans, from human mages, so yeah. So some of them are there. This is where ice, water, lightning, uh, time stop ability, so yeah. This is where, well, mostly a girl with blondish hair and bluish eyes has, what's it called? Ten, well, not even ten, mostly has six pairs of wings. But they're kind of like fallen angel wings, but kind of yellow, kind of like gold and dark black a little bit. But yeah, they kind of look like, uh, what's it called? Fallen and what's it called? Angelic, but yeah. But mostly fallen, but yeah. This is where another person has demonic wings. Another person does kind of have other wings, but yeah. Bluish, waterish wings, but yeah. This is where, well, Kogabe is chuckling because he's up in the air having Ozia Argent on a rock. And having Wolf freed with Excalibur that has four mixed to it. This is where, well, there's some, what's it called, exorcists are down there. Mostly some of them are just females. And of course, this is where, well, some of the other exorcists are kind of just not as strong as the females that has some of the, uh, well, some weapons that are special to them. But of course, this is where, well, they seem to be very powerful. Now, of course, this is where, well, Cocobill says, I will start a war by killing you two. Devil heiresses, even use human heiresses from different mages, and then I'll make sure that the fallen angels win this time. This is where, well, he then glares at Junko and says, I will definitely kill you. I'll make sure that the angel gets angry at me, and then I'll kill him because no one will stop me from not having this war. I will win this war this time. This is where, well, he grins at all of them, and this is where, well, all of them just looks at him with just a narrow eyes. This is where, well. This is where, well, something actually appears. Multiple blue arrows smash upon what's it called some of the uh, fallen. This is where the fallen cannot react fast enough, and they literally fall down and die in an instant, turning into blue flames. This is where, well, Kokobiel says, Who was that? This is where Uriah says, Sorry about that. Sorry about crashing the party. But I can't really let you hurt that many people. This is where Uriah kind of just puts his glasses up for being much more proper, but yeah. This is where Cookville scoffs and says, I see. I know what kind of species you are. You're a Quincy. You're someone that's very powerful. Much more powerful than that of the church. But I don't know why a Quincy like you is here. Hmm. It doesn't really matter why I'm here. I'm just here to kill you. I can see that you're trying to start a war. And that's not very proper to actually do that. When peace has actually started at there like a while ago. Why continue another war? You're just crazy at the time. This is where, well, Cockbill scoffs and says, Okay, are you going to stop me, Quincy? Huh? Are you going to just stop me or is someone else going to fight me? Huh? Because I don't think a Quincy like you, maybe however old you are, it doesn't matter. I don't think you'll be able to stop me. Oh, severe, that noise. Yeah, that's how they fell. This is where, well, who do you say? I'm not going to be the one fighting you. I'm going to just kill off your mages or mostly just soldiers. This is where, well, Cockerbell says, and who's going to be the one stopping me? It's not like you can stop me. A Quincy like you, you're too young. There's no way someone like you can actually take me on. The Quincy says, do you think I'm that young and too weak to fight you? Hmm, what if I shoot you right now? That's if you could hit me. This is where, well, 
you, uh, Uryu kind of just sent an arrow, but this is where Kokomo managed to dodge and says, You're dead now. This is where he sent a giant light spear strike towards Uryu, and Uryu was about to dodge until someone appeared very fast in front of him, pulls out the sword, mostly a sword called Demon Dweller, and this is where he sent a slash, an anti magic slash, right in front of him. Right now, cutting the, well, light spear, almost cutting Coco Bill. Coco Bill kind of flies up and says, What? That's impossible. No one could have actually be able to deflect or destroy that. He says, no one, you say? Well, shit, I'll be the first one in history to kick your ass. He say appears. Right now, having the sleeping mask on top of his forehead. And, of course, the work will. He then has the sword right in his right hand, being the team into one. This is where it will. Kokomo narrows his eyes. He can't sense that much energy from Issei, but it's kind of sinister at the same time. Kokomo says, who are you, human boy? Issei said, me? The one who's gonna beat the shit of you. Issei said very cockily and smirkily a little bit, but yeah. This is where, well, Kokomo growls at him and says, get him. This is where, well, some of the people that were kind of seeing this, mostly seeing the Quincy, a human, or mostly the species, because uh, Quincy is basically a human, but it's not a human entirely. It kind of has kind of divine power, similar to that of like an exorcist. But it's mostly a different species from exorcists and humans. But yeah, it's like a mixture of both of those. But instead of using kind of holy weapons, they use this kind of blue energy, which no one really knows what it is, but yeah. This is where it will. Issei grins and says, well, that's too bad for you people. I'm not losing any damn time. This is where Fallen Angel starts rushing towards Issei and even, well, Uri. Uri kind of sends multiple arrows and, of course, smashing into Fallen Angels. When Fallen Angel with four wings actually appears trying to attack Issei, Issei says, get out of my way. This is where Issei goes into black Issei. And, of course, this is where his hair is already ash blonde. And, of course, having, well, mostly not ash blonde. It's mostly it was brown. He managed to die fast enough. He just didn't really want to be shown that much. But of course, it worked. well, or well, he didn't die. He had it. Was it called? Uh, mostly, he had an illusion on. But yeah, he didn't really care that much. But because he couldn't die fast enough. But of course, it worked. well. He says, "Out of my way!" This is where you say right now, transform into black. You say, kind of having black hair and of course having a horn. So basically, the incomplete version from Devil Union. And you say right now slashes at what's it called the Fallen Angel. That being what's it called Donacy. Donacy could not dodge. <laughs> He falls down to the ground, realizing that his magic being drained and destroyed and empty. Issei right now flies up, and this is where it will. Even Uryu kind of flies up. This is where Blue Wings actually appear. This is where he's shooting multiple arrows at the fallen angels that couldn't really dodge. They tried to send, uh, what's it called, light spears at Issei and Uri, but Issei managed to cut it down. This is where it will. Issei says, you guys are quite pathetic. This is where it will. Some of the fallen angels start trying to make spells of, what's it called? Not light spells, mostly uh, poison spells. But this is where he says, says, Demon Destroyer. This is where the Demon Destroyer destroys anything. Even what's it called, the poison spells. This is where, well, they wind their eyes in an instant. This is where he says, says screw you, Demon Dweller. Anti-magic slashes. This is where he swings the anti-magic slashes straight towards the fallen angels. Right now, obliterating them in an instant. This is where he says, ha, suck on that, you weaklings. This is where, well, he doesn't stick out his tongue. This is where, well. Coco Bell is getting angry at the Quincy and this demon-like person. He says, why you brat? I'm going to kill you, little brat. He says, oh god, he's angry. Yeah, he's angry. This is where, well, you see, I should mention he was wearing casual clothes because, yeah, it was a day where he just gets to wear casual clothes. So he's wearing his red coat and white kind of outfit, but yeah, and red, like, belt. And this is where he's flying and dodging against, well, Coco Bell. This is where Coco Bell is saying, why don't you die, you boat? This is where he makes a huge light spear. And this is where, well, both Issei and Uru, they could have easily dodged. Well, they didn't really dodge. They mostly, what's it called? Issei managed to cut it, but they didn't notice about the second light spear. It was much faster. And this is where, well, the light spear was much faster and stronger. And of course, this is where it then smashes into, well, uh, mostly... This is where, well, we go, sorry, it's been a while, so I didn't know where I went, okay, yeah, I think I know where I'm at, but yeah, so we go into Issei, and even what's it got Uriya kind of, like, <coughs> attacking the fallen angel, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry about that, <coughs> sorry, 
So we go into the falling, just really attacking Uri and even Issei. Of course, this is where it will. Issei gets hit by a huge light spear, well, second light spear from, well, Coco Bell. This is where it will. Coco Bell says, damn you humans. This is where Uri actually managed to land down. And this is where he starts standing with the car, uh, well, arrows at, well, Coco Bell. Coco Bell realized that Uri is quite annoying. He's like an insect that won't give up. That's the word. Well, Issei gets up and says, Ah, you son of a bitch. That's the word. Well, someone's, well, mostly a lot of people scream Issei's name. And of course, when Issei looked up, he kind of noticed, well, the uh, uh, 12 females that kind of did kind of took his first seven, 12 kisses. This is the word. Well, Issei kind of gets burned. And this is the word. Well, Issei just tells them to stay back. He doesn't want them to get hurt. This is where it will. Aika doesn't know what's happening, but this is where she was about to run. But this is where Issei says, stay back. Issei says, it's Uri. Uri says, what? I'm going to restrain my... Well, we'll see. Release a restriction. Two restrictions. And I'm... You might need to kill me. This is where it will. Uri says, are you fucking insane? Do you even know how to control those? No, but uh, I don't care right now. <laughs> this motherfucker's strong. Even if I go W Union, I don't think I'll be enough strength to go fight him. It only takes me five minutes to even use double union. I haven't even got mastery of it. Well, his double union is kind of a mastery a little bit. He can go for 45 minutes if he's not in full power. But yeah, double union at hunger press, he can only use it, uh, well, five minutes entirely. And it won't be enough to fight against this guy. This is where Trike says, please use my power. Please. Fuck you, dragon. This is where Trike says, ugh. You know you can win! No, I can't. Even with your power, I don't think I'll be able to win. But I really have to learn how to use this dragon. I mean, not this dragon, this restriction level. Levy. Levy says, I know. You want to restriction. You want restriction zero and restriction negative one to be released. <sighs> Those swords are too dangerous for you. But if you want to, fine. This is where, well, the sword started appearing with chains. The, uh, mostly the grimoire itself. Swords started kind of just, well, not swords. Mostly uh, chains of crimson, dark red, and black kind of started appearing. Two swords appear, one being a whitish color, like a beautiful white fucking like, white color. And the other one is black. But the hilt itself is kind of curved a little bit. <clears throat> and the sword kind of looks like a needle a little bit. This is where, well... The sword itself is fully black, but it has like a symbol of three eyes, and it's red, but yeah. And the other sword is purely white, and it kind of looks like Ichigo's Bankai. Well, Ichigo's white. Well, Shiro's, mostly Shiro white, Ichigo's Bankai, the white version, but yeah. This is where Issei sighs, and he decides to grab both of them. This is where, well, the restriction level for it is now released thanks to Levi. This is where the chains let go of both of the swords, and this is where, well... The energy actually explodes from both of them. This is where, oh. He says, this power is too strong for me. But I can't give up. No, I can't. This is where, well, he then kind of grabs the two swords. And of course, the where, well, he kind of puts the black sword to the side. And of course, have the white sword in his left hand. Well, yeah. <clears throat> this is where, well. Well, not the black sword in his right uh, right hand, no, it's in the left hand, and of course the white sword in his right hand, this is where, well, he goes, <sighs> anti-hollow. This is where, well, mostly a mask appears being fully black in his face, well, yeah, black mask. Of course, having, like, these symbols, mostly these, instead of being symbols, they're kind of, like, markings, but instead of being red, like Ichigo's, it's kind of, like, black, but yeah. And this is where the mask entirely is, well, it's mostly black. Well, mostly the markings being kind of white, but yeah. It's called an anti-mask hollow, but an anti-hollow mask. This is where, well, his eyes turns a purple shade. Mostly one is blue and the other was a called green, so wait. So the green becomes red, a crimson, like, ruby red. And the, of course, the blue one becomes a very, like, orangey color, like, toss or kind of like that gem orange, but yeah. This is where, well, Issei's eyes, the segregated, mostly the white, and the eye kind of becomes black, well, both of them. And, of course, this is where he yells out, of course, being in the mask. This is where, well, he then screams to the black sword Martian, black Martian, and it says, Ignite! 
This is where the sword ignites, and of course, this is where the white sword right now has this powerful energy. But this reddish kind of, kind of like crimson, kind of like aura around it, like an aura, a red line. This is where the sword, he then screams out, BUN TAI! This is where, well, the sword ignites to becoming a much powerful and much more sharper than Dolish. Instead of being a Dolish white sword, it's a sharper, like, white sword. And of course, it's much longer. This is where, well, Issei looks at what's it called, mostly, well, uh, Coco Bill. Coco Bill says, what the hell is this energy? What the hell are you? What am I? It doesn't matter what I am. Libby. Libby says, are you sure? Do you think you really want to? It'd be enough. Let's do it. This is where Libby appears right now. He's bumping him. And of course, this is where, well, Issei right now goes into Devil Union. It doesn't matter how much power I have to do to kick your ass. I will show you the true power of the anti-magic demon that I have. This is where, well, <clears throat> an illusion of a giant demon appears behind, what's it called, Issei. This is where, well, two other people behind Issei appears. A white version of him fu being fully white, or mostly, yeah, a white version. But his eyes, instead of being yellow, it's kind of like red, crimson red. Well, red and kind of like, um, mostly red and uh, orange. While on the other side, there's a female that has goldenish hair. And of course, having a black outfit. And it seems to be next to the Black Martian. Well, Black Marsh, March. Yeah, Black Marsh. Not Black Martian, Black March. And of course, the white sword seems to have that one person, but yeah. This is where, well, you say corral at the well, what's it called? Coco Bill. But then a red, like a red, western, like a big western red dragon appears behind Issei fully. This is where, well, Issei has multiple powers and it seems to already be unlocked. Now, of course, he knows that he won't be having enough time to control these powers because he hasn't actually trained with them. This is where, well, Issei said, it's time. This is where Issei rushes towards Coco Bill in an instant with blinding speed. But this is where I'm gonna leave it off for part four of this what if. Because I gotta go do something and yeah. Sorry guys, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm leaving it off as such a cliffhanger. But that's fine. But other than that, bye. Yeah, I gotta go do something. But other than that, bye, bye, bye.